Okay, hey everybody, this is Paul from Inside PA Training. I am here with our lovely friend, my buddy Sundance. We did this a year ago. I know. Things have changed a little bit. It's uh, a lot of water under the bridge. So, kind of here to get her thoughts on, well, I'll set the stage. We interviewed about a year ago when we were uh, one quarter into our PA school program. Mm -hmm. We're now looking at our last quarter staring us in the face. Mm -hmm. Um, tell me how that year has been for you. It's good. Um, full spectrum, you know, school. I think that the fact that the year is closer to the end of my scholastic career has made me even more excited about being done. Um, and we talked a lot last time about my transition from medical school into PA school and yes. And kind of this big decision. So I'm still really close with all of my um, former classmates. And so they've all um, either gone into their fourth year, so finished third year. But most of them are, as part of their fourth year, looking at residencies, mm -hmm. which was, um, you know, an exciting time in medical school. You're flying around the country. You're looking at residency relocations. You're trying to figure out um, what you want to do, specialize in. Um it's a little bit anxiety provoking because you don't get to choose in medical school. You, you rank your favorite and then you go into this big draw across the nation. Everybody matches and you don't know where you're going to go. Hopefully somewhere on your ranked list. And if not, then you scramble. So I've had a couple of students um, come to me, you know, going, what are you going to do? Where are you ranking? Where are you, where, when's your match? And, um, and your situation is different from theirs. My situation is, I don't have to decide. I want to do a lot of different things. I want a good job. I want to stay locally. I want to, you know, make this kind of money, work this many hours. I, um, I'm, I don't have to count down to match. I just have to apply. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a little bit less nerve wracking, but for me, that's just been um, really empowering. Like I love the idea of going, you know, surgery with you versus orthopedics with you versus, you know, primary care with you. This is a job I want. I like. I'm feel excited like you have about. a lot of flexibility. Yeah, flexibility. Well, more just control in general. Yeah. It's kind of a lack of control for many, many years in medical school from mm -hmm. applying and getting into matching and then residency. And then the second part of the residency story, which everybody knows is kind of romantic, race anatomy or whatever, is like you're gone. Like mm -hmm. you thought medical school was hard. Yeah. You're just totally gone. I have um, a good friend of mine, her husband's in um, surgery residency, which is famously difficult and she's pregnant and he's just totally gone. So um, I'm really excited about being able to control that component, just kind of my absence. I know that I'm I'm absent a fair amount, absent-minded mostly, <laughs> <laughs> literally like just kind of distracted in my own family, but we're counting down, you know, it's mm -hmm. four months before I get to do my board. We all pass our boards. That's also a nice stress. It's not like yeah, so the let's... different... Yeah. Can I give a little perspective or, or For sure. invite a little perspective? When we did this a year ago, we were heavy into our first year of didactic. We were learning pathophysiology. Yeah. Yeah. We were starting medicine, which is where we went from learning diagnosis and going in more into treatment. Mm -hmm. um, but this year has been different. Right. Totally talk, different. Can you talk about some of those experiences you've had? Yeah. The basic, I'd say in medical school terms, it's the difference between first and second year and third and fourth year. Mm -hmm. Um, and it kind of mixes both of those first and second year, like you said, didactics, classrooms, textbook tests. And then our program graduates us into clinical work and we log patients and log what we're doing. We're, we're required to learn about what we're doing. We're doing projects, reading at home, blah, blah, blah. But it's real patients, you know, stethoscope on patients, chest kind of learning. So can you talk about some of the clinical work you've done? So my prime, I have a couple primary sites. They're fabulous. So primary meaning primary care, the first place you go to when you're sick. Um, and one of them is an, is an HIV clinic, CARES clinic in Sacramento, and it's just outstanding, um, full of great, great clinicians and a fascinating patient population and doing really good, difficult, complicated medicine. So that's been uh, a real privilege and then some other places how, just many kind day, of, how many days a week do you do that that's three days a week i try to work up to five days a week because inevitably i'm gonna have to take days off for testing exams and then and then the other thing that's kind of special about second year which is very third year-esque is these specialty rotations so that's when we start rotating through surgery inpatient medicine psychiatry pediatrics 
geriatrics, et cetera, et cetera. And it's kind of different for every student because students live in different places, other boarding details. But the bottom line is you really are a medical student, meaning you're in the wards, you're taking on your patients, you're scrubbing in, um, you're doing the gnarly hours, you know, which, you're doing calls. Which ones have you done? Everything except for inpatient. Okay. Uh, the difference is they're way shorter. Mm -hmm. So two to three weeks in our program mm -hmm. of these kind of intense rotations where you kind of say goodbye and you go and you throw on scrubs and a dirty white coat and you just stay there. And you learn a ton and you get pimped and it's awesome. It's high stress, <laughs> lots of work. And you don't do a shelf exam at the end. Mm -hmm. We don't. Mm -hmm. So you're learning about your patients, what you're doing, but really what you're doing is kind of honing your academic prowess, but you're learning what a patient goes through in those settings mm -hmm. because no matter what I do, I'm going to have a patient who's going to need a surgery. Mm -hmm. And I really do want to be able to hold their hand and go, I don't know what it's like today, but this is what it looks like in there. And this is kind of how the dance is. Mm -hmm. So it's more of like a, I feel like a, an immersion enculturation and um, being a part of the, the big leagues mm -hmm. a little bit. But, um, and for me also, another really exciting part of that has been kind of job seeking. Mm -hmm. So I'm in there and I'm looking around like, Oh, there's a mid-level, you know, they're first assisting. I could do this. or what, what has interested you? I mean, you did some rotations. Did any of them really speak to you? Or? I have a really problem, a real problem with falling in love with everything, as you know. So <laughs> as I was in the ER, I was like, this is it. That How do I get a, a job? Who do I need to meet? Problem to have, <laughs> yeah, know? it's been really great. But now, like, literally, okay, so falling in love with, you know, emergency medicine or whatever. But then really looking at the hospital and looking at, you know, the PA's jobs. They have great autonomy. They have their own patients. Every once in a while, they're going to get like a physician to kind of sign off on them. But, you know, basically they're doing their, they're doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and if they're checking in with a physician, it's like, this is what I think, this is what I'm going to do. And every single time the physician like goes, sounds like a great plan. Go ahead and put my name on your chart. I mean, that's kind of the And dance. seeing that has made you, has reassured you that. You it's awesome. It Not every place is like that, but for me, where I rotated, I I got really turned on by ER, mm -hmm. and then surgery. There was components of surgery. I mean, just love anatomy. I love you know getting into it. I'm not crazy about the hospitalist side and chasing numbers and chem panels and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice to figure that out about myself. Yeah. So right now I'm in this funny situation. We just talked earlier. I took a phone call. I'm like actually trying to create a job for myself in a local hospital that doesn't exist yet. So I was on the phone with a, some guy in the hospital community basically selling myself. This is what PAs can do. This is why I'm going to be cost effective. I want to work with this surgeon because he knows that I'm hot or, you know, I can be quickly taught and do what he wants. But I really think that other specialists are going to want to hire me to do their procedures too. Mm -hmm. So you guys need to consider me. It was is, very ballsy and kind of surreal. Your but... own job. <laughs> On the fly, something you do as a new MD, do you think? I mean, have you heard of that? Or? Absolutely not. I mean, so doctors have been here cool. for longer. They don't yeah. have to. They trod down a well-worn path. It's a beautiful a, thing. Usually a particular specialty. Absolutely. And so I, I think that's one of the differences that I'm noticing um, as we're in this program and in talking to you is, yeah. you know, there is some freedom to go different directions, including maybe even making your own direction. Exactly. Right? That's pretty unusual. So that's what's exciting. Model, you know? Yeah. The other thing that happened recently that was um, gave me a real kind of surge of excitement about this new career choice, just getting to our punchline, went to a friend's um, baby shower down six hours from here in Santa Barbara, a beautiful area. One of her good family friends is an orthopedic surgeon. And he just, I was there quilting a baby blanket because I was late and trying to catch up with this gift to give her. And we were just checking around. He saw that I cut my finger off and figured out I was in construction. And he was like, I want to hire you. You know, and I was like, I have no experience in orthopedics. And he's like, I know that's usually what I'm looking for, but I can see that you know how to sew and you know how to use tools. And are you great for me? So it really started this question. You know how my... to use tools, even if you're not perfect with them, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I figured but, out. But some of the selling point was that, he, that you had an interest in that kind Exa of thing. Exactly. Well, that he, he had an interest. He knew the value of me, mm -hmm. which is a little bit new on the West Coast, mm -hmm. right? I'm, I'm having to sell myself to my local community because mm -hmm. they're a little bit new to PA. So it's different mm -hmm. from East Coast. Yeah. But the second really exciting part of it was, so I came home and talked with my husband and we were like, you know, where we stand up and moving right now is not the best for us. But it really tillated this kind of, actually, I would really love ortho, but not right now. Because mm -hmm. I have a two year and a half year old and I'm so crazy about being with her and being in her life. 
And he's like, I need three days in the clinic a day and two days in the OR. That sounds fabulous, but not right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm more excited about kind of ferreting out a job that's closer to the trunk of the branches into maybe just surgical specialty, more primary care, and then later specializing myself. Yeah. I could specialize myself right now. We talked a little bit earlier. You had a crazy specialist PA kind mm-hmm. of go more general in your clinic. Yeah. That's possible, but... Um, it's probably easier to go the other direction, though, to start more yeah, general and then yeah, specialize. Yeah. And I don't know if I really want to just sound my, surround myself with kind of elbows and knees or, you know, tennis yeah. players and golfers. I really do love, like, the full strata of, kind of the socioeconomic and, stuff. And I know about you. You and I are both what we, we call each other sort of marrow suckers. You know, you like to, to <laughs> try everything. And yeah, be, yeah. At least you have a lot of different experiences, and it sounds like totally. you're really getting there. Totally, and really kind of hone a skill that could be more applicable, a broad spectrum. I mean, what I'm trying to do right now is really convince this surgeon that he has something special in an unexperienced PA because he really can make the physician extender out of me. Yes. He can handcraft me to do things the way he does them. And I, I, I met someone in our last you know, class that graduated before us in our program who said they had an awesome, amazing opening doing cardiothoracic surgery because they were able to go to the CT surgeon and say, right. I'm straight out of school. I know about surgery that you want to have someone who does it the way that works for you. Right. Take me and mold me. And yeah. that was really attractive to them. And they yeah. did. Yeah. So. Yeah. I want to, to check in with you briefly about yeah. um, one of the issues we talked about in the first interview with you was about life balance. And mm-hmm. that, that was something that you were hoping that the PA direction would give you. A year later, what are your thoughts on that? So, a couple answers. One, I'm not good at it. So I wouldn't, <laughs> it would be, I would be, it would be wrong for me to say that I had found it. Uh-huh. The difference is that if I were better at it, it would at least be possible now. Uh-huh. So I, I am more of the kind who oscillates between, you know, when it's like right now we're cramming for a cardiology final yeah, coming exactly. up. Let me, let me take a <laughs> It's <moment>. not pretty. <laughs> this is our table here with food computers books christina over there who wants to be off camera um we, it's a big but mess of studying family. going on so i mean but now my family knows that for for a week before school it's not balanced i'm gone yeah it's kind of like bye bye mommy i'll i'll see you when you get back uh-huh. and then there's this great time when i come home where it's kind of like minimal clinical work and i'm just i'm totally you know the crock pot's going and I'm working on my crafts, making baby clothes and all the things I really want to do. We have chickens now and the house is more moved in. So, so it's more like of this, if you took the mean, it's more balanced, yeah, but I de- yeah. generally oscillate. But your but, life isn't hundred percent consumed with right. your studies. But the biggest difference is when I look at my former classmates and I see them, basically the dance is no balance. I mean, you just, it's not for a lack of trying. It's a process of acceptance. Medical school is a fire that produces amazing, amazing medical providers. Mm-hmm. And, but it can also break them. Yeah. And, um, and so it takes a special person to do that. And um, I think you really, really have to want it so bad more mm-hmm. than anything else. And you'll come out the other side feeling like it was a, so I, I have preceptors who want me to go back to medical school because they really believe in the medical school model as being the best. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're wrong, but they're not 33 with a two and a half year old. Yeah, you sound pretty satisfied with the direction. Would you? Is that fair? It's absolutely fair. And I'm excited to say that because it actually, it took a long time for me to get, I feel like it's almost in the past two months where I'm like, I, I was just talking with my good friend whose who her husband is the one in the surgical residency and it was like it was like I had to get off the Titanic early. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I still kinda wanna be on. It was a fantastic once in a lifetime thing. Mm-hmm. But for me it would have been a Titanic. Yeah. Um we got about ten more seconds um with with closing. Um thank you so much for talking and uh, hopefully, you know, after you've been a PA for a year or two we can do this again. But I really appreciate it. Anytime, Polly. Thanks a lot. (laughs)